Hello Rat Bags, it's Joe Plays Games. Welcome to the Access Show. Today I'm going to be giving you the lowdown on six early access games finally being completed in 2018 as fully fleshed games. You'll know from following my channel I've covered quite a few of these and I have been basing my channel around early access news. So come with me as I give you all the information, the lowdown on what's going on, what platforms these games are going to be coming out on and some surprises. You may not even realise some of them are early access games. Subnautica, the underwater survival game, is finally releasing in 2018, 23rd of January on PC, and it should be reaching Xbox full release a couple weeks after. It's about to go into certification on Xbox, and so it should be actually coming very, very soon, straight after the PC launch. Subnautica has been a runaway success on PC over the last few years, gaining more and more daily players every single week. In an age where massive games developers want you to believe that single player games are dying or the only way to get a game out nowadays is with multiplayer, Subnautica is bucking that trend. The single player experience has gone from strength to strength with lots of updates keeping everything fresh, including lots of different creatures, different ways to get around in the massive ocean exploration space game. Subnautica is a fantastic game and as long as it can really iron out some of the kinks and problems that were holding back the Xbox One version, I really see it going from strength to strength in the future. More importantly though, for people on PlayStation, you will be getting a version. I've been keeping you up to date with the actual information about it coming onto the PlayStation 4 and it is coming to the PlayStation 4, but it won't be coming for a little while, maybe not even until the summertime. Subnautica has just recently received a new update called the Eye Candy Update which improves graphics, gives lots of different options, I'm hoping these will also come to the Xbox One as well. Xbox One has suffered massively from issues and problems with the game, notoriously not being able to save progress and the actual frame rates being so bad it was making people actually sick while playing the game. The development team have been really upfront and forthright with what they're adding to the game and anytime anything's gone wrong they've been really communicative about exactly what happened and what to expect from certain updates and I really applaud the way they've done it. They've also done their best to keep the actual different platforms running at the same update. Now there was a big period of time where the Xbox One didn't receive as many updates but it did catch up and now the Xbox is pretty much on par with the PC. Alongside that PS4 port, they are also working on a bunch of DLC, a story mode, female protagonist as well as brand new biomes, vehicles and creatures what you would normally expect in a game that's going to be constantly updated throughout its life. On the Steam charts at the moment, Subnautica has had over 41,000 reviews and they are mostly very positive. That is a big achievement for a game like this. It really shows the popularity of it on PC. Xbox, like I've mentioned is a little bit behind in terms of the technical stuff they need to work on but there's no doubt the actual content adding to the game is going to be absolutely fantastic once they get it all running smoothly i can't wait for subnautica to be finally finished i've played it many times over the last couple years and i really enjoyed it but i just wanted the technical side to be a little bit better before i jumped in for a full let's play so subnautica expect it on the 23rd of january full launch on pc and on Xbox maybe a week or two just afterwards. Who knows, they may be even pass certification and release it on the same day, and PS4 in the summertime. Next up we've got We Happy Few releasing on April 13th on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. The survival exploration game will have a story mode attached to it, centred around three different people. You'll actually be able to play the game in three different ways with the three different characters, as well as the open survival nature of it as well. I really like We Happy Few's premise. I was drawn to it immediately when it first came out on the PC and then shortly after on the Xbox One. We Happy Few is going to be a AAA price game. Developers have stated that they feel the content deserves an actual price increase for the amount of work that's gone into it and the actual gameplay that you're going to be experiencing. They partnered up with Gearbox. This caused a lot of controversy. If you don't know, Gearbox aren't very well known for publishing their games very well. In fact, they're great for known for making them, like Borderlands, but when it comes to publishing other games, they have got a bit of a bad reputation. It all ended up being a bit of a hodgepodge mess when they announced different plans for releasing pricing and they also said they weren't going to be updating the game anymore until full release. So the game hasn't actually had a substantial update for nearly four or five months now. So it's definitely a really weird early access game. Most games want as much feedback as possible up till release but they have kind of just shut doors and closed ranks hoping that I guess the story will carry forward the game and make everyone want to play it when it finally releases 
As of the last few months, We Happy Few on PC has barely had any players playing it. It's kind of dropped off the face of the earth. It's still playable on the Xbox One in the early access phase. Obviously, there is no actual version you can play on the PS4 just yet, but it will be coming on all three platforms. They do have plans for DLC as well with a season pass and the special collectors of versions, which most people would be happy with since it's quite a unique property, unique game. As long as it can get past the bad press and negative reception it had when it announced the partnership with Gearbox, I think the Wii Happy Few definitely has a lot of promise. I just really hope it rises above what it was when I played it, which was a bog standard survival game. It was pretty much criminal that they weren't going to be adding more story to the actual game, with so much character building and such a vivid, great aesthetic to it, it really deserves story. So I'm really pleased the developers went back and really focused more on it and added something more to it. Whether or not that means it's worth the price increase and being labelled a AAA game, we won't find out until April the 13th when We Happy Few finally launches. Player Unknown Battlegrounds is in my actual list of games fully coming out in 2018 because it hasn't actually come out properly on the Xbox One or the PS4 just yet. It did launch officially on PC at 1.0 in December time, but that's not going to happen for Xbox for a good few months yet. Why? Because the game is janky as hell. If you've not seen any of the reviews or any of the problems and issues that have cropped up, lots of people just saying the game should never have even been released as an early access version just yet. It needs more polish, it needs more work. Other people enjoying the game massively, it is definitely going to be in the top 10 Christmas sellers once Xbox release some sales figures. PUBG is a worldwide phenomenon. You don't need me to explain what the game really is, but you will be looking for answers about whether or not it's coming to the PS4. As of right now, it seems that Xbox have got even more of an exclusivity deal than we originally thought. The developers blew hole of toyed with audiences and fans have said that they've not really decided exactly what's going on or they've just let Xbox label it as a launch exclusive. Xbox Microsoft have removed all of that launch business from their promo. It now just says Xbox One exclusive. That is really worrying. It seems that Xbox have managed to secure exclusivity for Battlegrounds. Of course, I will keep you updated, and it may be a similar situation like Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider when that had Xbox exclusivity. It may just be for a year's purpose or a year's length. I will let you guys know exactly what's happening with the PS4 launch when it happens. I'm expecting the Xbox version to come out of early access sometime around May. At the same time, in May with a more concrete date is Conan Exiles, scheduled for 8th of May in fact. It's going to be launching on Xbox One, the PS4 and the PC. Again, there's only an early access version on Xbox and PC at the moment, with the PS4 not having any sort of early access program. According to Steam reviews at the moment, it's only got 11,000 reviews and most of them are mixed, so that's not a very good story for the actual developers. But Funcom seem very pleased, in fact it's turned around their company, the sales from Conan Exiles alone has made sure they can invest and buy the actual intellectual property, they now own 50% of the Conan and rights so they can go on and use that media in films, games, books, even more stuff to do with the Conan world. They obviously are very keen and very passionate about Conan but that needs to translate more to the game. It needs more content. The developers have said they're going to be polishing it more which a lot of people have applauded them for that they would rather do some polish, take some time to work on systems and make sure they all work and function properly rather than other early access games that tend to just leave it in a bit of a broken mess until the last minute. So that is definitely one positive aspect with Conan Exiles but it needs more. It needs some sort of mount system which they have said they're going to implement and it does need some more NPC sort of behaviour that is more equivalent to what you would expect when you're playing a game like this. Obviously it is online but they will have an offline well to it. There is a single player sort of idea for the game so it definitely needs some fixes, it definitely needs improvements in that aspect. The building Conan is amazing, it's one of the best features. The gods are fantastic but it definitely needs a little bit extra content. Alongside its big plans for actual mounts, it's going to have an NPC horde which will go around the map causing chaos and destruction. They're also continually adding brand new 
bits and bobs like weapons and armor as well as some new creatures and I'm hoping they may even add a brand new expansion or area to the map when it launches but probably that won't come until sometime during the summer as one of its first big updates after official launch. The development team are fantastic at communicating with its fans, they've took on board lots of ideas, lots of feedback and they're always letting us know what's going on with development of the actual game whether it's PC or Xbox One. I really hope they get this content, this added extra content they plan in time for the actual official release. Otherwise I fear the game will just quickly die if it doesn't have more robust systems for players to get used to and get into and really get to grips with and keep them busy. Conan Exiles launches on May the 8th, Xbox, PS4 and PC. Next up is a game you've not seen on my channel but I've definitely kept up with what's going on with it. It's a significant update, Paragon on the PS4 and PC is a free to play MOBA. The big news is it might be coming to Xbox as well. Exclusivity for the PlayStation and PC is probably going to last around 6 months to a year but after that it will launch on the Xbox One. It is an early access and they had a bit of a controversial start just like Fortnite where some parts of it were paid even though the full game will eventually be free. You buy skins for your characters and they're continually adding brand new characters to the actual MOBA. When I played it I've got to say I wasn't that impressed. I found the gameplay just a little bit boring but I'm not a very big fan of MOBAs in general so I would definitely like to give it another try and give you a really good opinion on what I think about it. Expect the full release to come out of early access at some point in June or July, that's when I reckon it will launch judging on the updates they've been receiving and what the developers have been saying in the last few months. You can go ahead and download it on the PC and the PlayStation 4 right now and judge for yourself whether or not it's a good game. Interestingly enough it is made by Epic Games who actually publish Fortnite as well. So could we see some crazy crossovers? I really hope not. It's probably going to come out at some time in summer. Let's see what happens when it finally does. And speaking of Fortnite, obviously it's still an early access game. If you didn't know the PvE experience saved the world you do have to buy it at the moment currently to play but that is also going to be a free to play experience just like the battle royale mode it was originally going to be pegged for an early 2018 full release but i think they're going to spend a little bit more time with it and by the time they've polished it up and added more modes and different features to it i don't expect save the world or actual battle royale to leave early access until june july maybe even august time Another game that's caught the controversy with its pricing plan of charging people for early access versions and then releasing it as a free mode, it has got issues, particularly with its cosmetic items which I spoke about at length as being too expensive. However, it's not stopped the popularity one single bit over 20 million players, and that's probably around 25 million players right now, really giving player unknown battlegrounds a run for its money in the most popular battle royale game there is. So there we go, 6 early access games finally getting full releases in 2018. Which of them games have you tried? Which one's been your favourite? What are you most looking forward to being seen completed and finished with end game content? Let me know in the comments section down below and stay tuned. I'm going to be giving you even more top 5, top 6, top 10s. Showing you guys brand new early access games coming to console as well as some early access games to look out for on the PC coming up in 2018. I am Jay Plays Games. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you rat bags later.